Welcome everyone to the fifth edition of Leopard Spotlight for the 2020-2021 school year. I'm John Falco. And I'm Katherine Smith. In this edition, a teacher takes an unexpected turn to teach her students in a new way. LNN shows you the dangers of distracted driving. And a student merges competition with a classic thrill. But first, a high school teacher shows the community that being a leopard is a lifelong commitment. Annabeth, Carter, and Noah share the story. Lovejoy High School animations teacher and electives director Ray Cooper has been teaching at Lovejoy for over 16 years and has recently embarked on a new project, helping graduating students find some peace of mind for their daunting years after high school using the stories of Lovejoy's own alumni. You'll, you'll, you'll end up when you're a senior. If you're not there yet, um, you know, you've got that senioritis, you've been in school for 13 years, right? You're ready to get out, which is totally natural. Um, but there's this pressure that once you get out of school that you need to be, have it all planned out. What do you want to do with your life? You know, that's the question everybody asks. And, you know, as a 17 or 18 year old, you're like, I have no idea. But what I thought is that I know so I've taught here since 2006. I know a lot of alumni. Let me get them to kind of say, this is what I did after high school. So my students could see, oh, there's more than one path. One of the alums sharing her story for the Finding Meaning After High School project is Lauren Rivera, an art teacher at Lovedor Elementary. Mr. Cooper actually reached out to me this summer. Um, I was, it was right before I started doing all my learning at Love doing my trainings, and he just told me about the whole program and asked if I'd be interested in doing it, and I said, of course. Lauren expresses why she chose to contribute to the project and what she believes her personal experiences can provide to the teenagers and the young adults. I think that it's really hard uh, being young and getting caught up in things, and I know choosing schools during this point in time is hard. Being older now and looking back a little bit, it's things are so different and I've gotten a different perspective and I might as well share it. I think when I would approach people, I would say, you, seem, you know that there's life after high school. How have you found meaning after high school? And meaning doesn't mean, you know, what's the meaning of your life? It's what do you do right now that you enjoy? Cooper hopes finding meaning after high school is both beneficial to its viewers and can be a way of bringing together the Lovejoy alumni. Not only are we trying to serve you know, current students, parents, and the community. But what about these alumni? Maybe like step three or four of this could be, you know, the alumni um, having some sort of Lovejoy LinkedIn where they're bringing people together after graduation and kind of networking. Uh, one thing that I've learned, the more people you know, um, the more you can learn and the more chances you have to find out about opportunities and take advantage of that. So I, I see this, my piece here is really just to get people's stories out. Even after Cooper moves on to new projects, he hopes to stay connected to his students and colleagues, wishing for the continued growth and positive impact of the project he has started. I have my own path too, right? I like to keep in contact with former students, former teachers that I teach with. I really like those, the relationship aspect of that. So I think once I'm done here, you know, in the building, I'll still keep those connections. I mean, just because people leave your classroom doesn't mean that they're not your responsibility anymore or you're um, still part of your mission. I don't know where it's gonna go from there. The sky's the limit. This is Carter Lewis, Noah Nadu, Annabeth Smith, reporting for the Love Joy News Network. A high school grant gives students a realistic way to reach new heights. Matthew, Lee, and George shift gears. Lovejoy High School's aerospace engineering and pre-calculus teacher, Crystal Gaddy, has always had a passion for aerospace engineering. And recently, she received a grant through the Lovejoy Foundation to buy enough flight yokes for the whole class. Airplanes and aerospace, that's always been kind of a passion of mine, but um, never really did anything about it. I mean, obviously, my, my main passion is math, so um, that's, that's my traditional go-to. But once I was given the opportunity to learn and teach in the engineering program, um, I at first thought it was only going to be offered every other year. So I'm ecstatic to find out that I get to offer it every year. It was super exciting getting the grant for the flight simulators. Um, well, the flight simulator itself, we, we had, PLTW gave us that, but the flight sim yoke um, is extremely exciting. Um, trying to work the flight simulator um, with a mouse or just on the, the pad on the laptop is near impossible. Um, and so I, I'm just super excited that students are gonna get to experience the flight simulator with the yoke. 
Junior Declan Cunningham is one of the first who gets to experience and benefit from them. Before I took this class, Miss Gaddy said that she had gotten a flight yoke and throttle and it was and she had gotten it running. But she only had one. But now that we have it all with the grant she was able to get, I'm really excited for it. I think that'll be my new favorite thing, part of my new favorite part of this class once we're able to do it. Not only do they use flight simulators in this class, but students, such as senior Joseph Showa, also fly high with model rockets. It's been really fun. We did a paper airplane, or not paper, a wooden airplane uh, build. That was fun. We launched those, and now we're currently on a rocket build. We're mostly uh, just on the design process at the moment for rockets. We're starting the build process, I believe, tomorrow. The plan is to shoot them off. Uh, we're building small model rockets, I think 18 inches at the maximum. This is Lee Kinnebrew, George Burris, and Matthew Urquhart reporting for the Lovejoy News Network. Driving is a privilege that high schoolers take for granted. Jake, Christian, and I take you behind the wheel. This sophomore has taken riding go-karts to the next level. Chaney, John, and Justin take you to the track. For most of his life, sophomore Alex Williams has been in love with the sport of racing. Last year, he began a career of his own, competing in local go-kart races. There's a big sense of thrill that you have. Like, you're kind of on your own. I don't have a radio, so I can't talk to anybody. And since it's so close to together, you know, the, it's not like it's not like a car where you have this whole box around you. It's 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 wheel to wheel racing. You're right next to each other. And that's my dad's car. Alex's love for racing began years ago as he watched his father Michael race cars. I had always been really into cars, but the concept of how you get onto a racetrack and become a race car driver was I couldn't even comprehend it. And so it was uh, the fact that that was even a possibility just blew my mind, and it was so terrifying the first time I did it um, that I was just hooked. To start off with my dad, he's the one, uh, he does racing. You know, since he was five or six, he's been going out to the track. So he observes a lot and he does really listen. He's taught me like a lot of the basics, which I learned. And he has his own private coach and whatever he learns from him, he'll also toss on me. Um, but a lot of the, like the little tips and tricks that you learn to get like, like half a second off, um, you'll learn from the other competitors out there. Well, sometimes it's hard because racing, as Alex has figured out, it's you have ups and downs. So you'll have, even in the same day, you can have a great race where you really perform well, and then immediately after that, you're in last place. You make a mistake and all of that. So it's one of those things that you're constantly having to develop uh, and try to improve, and you're really competing against yourself 
uh, yeah, you're on the track, uh, you know, like him with the carts, um, he's racing against kids who have way more experience and have been doing this a lot longer, but he can see his skill set building and developing over time so that he's really becoming competitive. And it's not about competing against those other people as much as how he can improve himself. And it's the same thing that motivates me in the race car. Although Michael and Alex have helped each other develop as racers, a rivalry continues to grow between the two. It's a, it, there's still a sense of competitiveness against each other. I still think I'm faster than him, though he doesn't drive go-karts. Um, but definitely over the summer, we did get a lot closer because uh, we were with each other around like at least once a week throughout the entire day. This is Chaney Kelly with Justin Lewis and John Falco, reporting for the Lovejoy News Network. We hope you enjoyed these stories. Until next time, I'm John Falco, and remember, if there's a story to find, we'll find it here on Leopard Spotlight.